Welcome to Quilt Cam, everybody. This is Bonnie Hunter in the basement at Quiltville, where we have not had Quilt Cam for a long, long time. It's been far too long, and I'm really excited to be here tonight. I hope that there are folks going to join me. I know this pulled the wool out of a lot of people's, uh, or what do you say, pull the rug out of another <laughs> a lot of people's uh, plans for tonight. It's a Friday night and people have plans with their families or plans to watch football or whatever it is, but I threw it out there this morning that I'm home alone and I can do quilt gam tonight and we can play catch up because we have not um, done this for a long time. The summer was crazy. How was your summer? I, I just, it seems like it just barely started and then it was gone. If I look back just a, a few events, I was off to teach in Louisville, Kentucky, came home, had one day to pack my suitcase off to England. We went, then on my back, way back from England, I immediately flew to Phoenix to visit my brother. I came home, had one day to pack, headed off to Pennsylvania to teach there for uh, over two my weekends. Brother. So, I came home, had a and, um, pack, oops, off. hang on just a second. Would this is, there for I don't hours. want this, so it's talking back to me. Up. Hold on just a second, folks. Okay, I don't know why my volume did that. Anyway, um, the screen was just talking back to me. So I headed off to Pennsylvania, taught there, came back. Um, most of you know that I lost my brother in September to uh, glioblastoma. And then we had all this, this, this family plans to make and things to run out and do and things like that. So we are here at Quilt Cam and I need this. I, I need this. I've been 11 days watching quilters play with the fabric and play with the machines in uh, Nebraska. Now it's our time. So I hope that you'll join me. Now, if you've never tuned into Quilt Cam Live before and this is your first time, if you want to share your project with me, this is the email address that you want to send it to. QuiltCamTime, one word, QuiltCamTime at gmail.com. So don't send things to my regular email. That is strictly for, for business stuff. If all of the QuiltCam stuff ends up in there, then I end up losing sign uh, side of contracts and replies and things that need to come in. So QuiltCamTime at gmail.com. What am I working on? I'll show you. I'll show you. You know how it is. I, uh, I'm i never in the mood for a holiday until the holiday is right upon us. So I can't sew Christmas stuff in July. I can't sew 4th of July stuff in January. I am just holiday um, generated, I guess. So how many of you remember this? Can you see these fabrics? I've got this on my alpaca mat because I didn't have a flannel board thing to show you. So this block is getting ready to be sewn together. And the reason why it's not sewn together yet is because maybe I want to switch this one out for a different colorway. Or maybe these, these orange ones that are just two fabrics, maybe I want to use four different ones from four different strip sets. And so have the color placement the same, but not the um, same fabrics per block or maybe i want the same fabrics per block and we'll see so i'm just i think i'm going to do a few sets and then lay them out and then decide where i'm going to go so this is my chain and hourglass block it's in a summer issue of quilt maker magazine this one did you get this one in the mail if they don't have it on the quilt maker website because i know it's probably not on newsstands anymore if they don't have it on the quilt maker website i know I know for a fact they have it in digital form, and that would be a really easy way for you to get um, the pattern that you want right here. And plus, there's a bunch of other good stuff in there. But this is uh, the block pattern right here. Can you see that? And it's done in only two fabrics. And I'm pulling in because I am feeling Halloweeny. I'm pulling in three fabrics, and I think this will be fun to play with. I, I probably won't be done until next Halloween. That's how it went with the string pumpkins. But this is what I'm doing. So when I am working on kitting up anything, I've had lots of questions. How do you get stuff ready to go on the road? Well, I my next on the road project or trip 
is the end of the month, I actually leave on Halloween to go teach for a retreat up in West Virginia. Now, I love teaching for retreats because it goes like this. Class goes from 9 to 4. At 4 o'clock, guess what happens? Bonnie gets a sewing machine next to everybody else and gets to sew and be one of the girls. So this is what I've been doing. I need three strips each of a color and a neutral for the background. You see what's going on on here? Just when you think there's no more in the stash, you find more. Y2K fabric, you get bonus points for using this. Besides, if it's a Halloween quilt and you take off the twos, you've just got, ooh. So that'll work. Okay, and I've made myself three more strip sets. When I am figuring, instead of just going with a whole bunch of strips and, and cutting them to size at retreat, I want them in baggies so that they're ready to go. So I figure out how many strip sets I'm going to need, unfinished size, do the math to add them together, and then depending on how many cuts of the same thing down the strip set, I'll add a half an inch to an inch, just to give me a little bit of bumper room so that I can true up the strip set, and then if I make a little bit of a whoops cut, I can straighten it up again and move on. So I've got these kitted up. I've done, how many of you have this? This was the Pennsylvania Plain and Fancy. I loved this whole line. This is a, a vintage cheddar looking fabric, and I've paired it with an orange polka dot. Really fun. So that's in there. And all of my fabrics, even though I'm doing a Halloween kind of quilt, only some of the fabrics are going to be an actual Halloween print. I also like to just go through my tone on tone stuff. This is a Moda Marble from back in the day. And this, I don't know how to how to date this thing. I think it's a 90s thing. It's like a plaid white on white with sparkly gold hearts. <laughs> it's got to go. It's got to go. Let the hearts be sewn up in the Halloween project because we love Halloween. Other things that I've done here, I have pre-cut several sets of quarter square triangles for the hourglass units. and. They are going to be sewn with right sides together. And they're already cut, essential triangle tool, right sides together, a light one and a dark one, so that I can just feed those through the machine. So all of this stuff is going to be kitted up and, and ready to go when I go to West Virginia to teach for this. I'm not even sure how many blocks I want to do. I just figure it's a three or four day retreat. I will kit myself up enough blocks, maybe 20, maybe 24. Um, and see if I can get those done during retreat time. Ziploc baggies are my friend, and they help keep me organized. So I won't have to spend a whole lot of time ironing strips or cutting strips to size or spending time cutting all these matched pairs of triangles because they'll all be already done. So this is my hint for you. If you go on retreat and you only have you know, a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and you leave Sunday afternoon to go back home. If you only have that much time to retreat and sew with your friends, do what you can ahead of time to um, kit things up, to do what pressing and cutting and organizing that you can do so that when you finally get there and you set up your machine, you are ready to sew. Now, the machine I'm sewing on tonight, I swapped out uh, machines this afternoon. It's, it's not like I was crazy enough enough stuff on my plate. I also wanted to sew on a different sewing machine because it's Halloween. So it needs to be a black one to go with a project. This is the Singer 66 that my son Jeff brought home for me. It was in his boss's garage and they were going to pitch it. And so he knew his mom would want it. And he brought it home and we got it up and working. It has a non-Singer motor on it. So it has a little different presser foot, but I, I mean a foot pedal, but I like that because it's one of those foot pedal foot pedals. So we could really make this thing so. Now, one of the things that I did to get myself ready was thread up the machine and do a test seam. So I knew where my quarter inch was going to be on this. And to double test here, I'm just going to do a little, little strip test sewing here. I love how this machine moves. It does a great job. And I have a, a leader ender 
four patch in the back of the machine already. I'm just going to spin the seam on the back of that four patch and give it a press. If the seam allowance is where it should be, this four patch that I just made, this is for our current leader ender project, the, um, what's the name of that thing? <laughs> Jewel box stars, okay? It should measure three and a half. Yeah, it does. It's three and a half. So I know that my seam allowance is in the right place because I tested the unit for unit size. Remember, measuring the seam allowance by itself isn't going to tell you anything. The proof is in the measurement here. And we're going to be going over this again and again and again because guess what's happening in just about a month, a little over a month now, um, our two, winter 2018 into a little bit of 2019 Quiltville mystery. How many of you are ready? I've had a lot of questions already. Um, when do yardage requirements come out? By Halloween. You know, I've been gone for almost two weeks. So all that stuff has to be, yardage has to be figured, posts have to be written, paint chips have to be gathered. All of that has to be done. So be looking for that within the next, yeah, almost two weeks, not quite two weeks. Um, and we'll have that for you. And then you'll have about three weeks to pull your yardage, your colors, your tools, get everything pressed, washed if you're a washer, ready to go. Clue number one is going to go live always, as always, 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 Black Friday. That's in the morning, Black Friday, my time, Eastern time. So which means that if you're in Europe, it's going to be afternoon on the fourth Friday of November. If you're in Australia, you'll likely already be in bed. Get it the next day and we'll, we'll deal with it that way. But again, I look forward to um, another winter mystery with you. It's become my absolute favorite, favorite time of, of the year. I'm home. I'll be done with my travel. We'll be able to go over all of the units with a fine comb. So you're going to get all the hints and tips and tricks on how to do successful units that fit together. If you follow that formula, guess what? Your whole quilt is going to turn out just right. Let me run just, just another couple of strip sets through here. Uh, yes, I am putting the Sparkly 2000 up against an orange and batik because I can. We're just going to feed these through. And again, the, the pattern for this quilt is in Quilt Maker Magazine. The issue is July, August. So it's just a couple of issues old. July, August, 2018. If you can't find it on the shelves, if you don't have a subscription, I know you can get it digital. Whoops, you know what? These need to go on those. So I'm not going to sell those to each other. I am going to press to the dark. I'm just going to finger press for now, and then when the whole strip set is pieced, I will iron press. Make sure this iron's on over here. Okay, it's on. I'll sew these two, and then we'll check to see who's posting in with me today. If I just get these ready, they'll be ready for me to work on in West Virginia. Are you coming to the West Virginia retreat? I hope so. I hope some of you have tuned in. Okay. One more. While I was getting ready for quilt cam, I realized I still had about 20 minutes free and I was already ready. So guess what I did? Cleaned off my cutting table. Isn't that dismal? I should have sewn, but if I had sewn, I wouldn't have anything left for quilt cam tonight. All right, I'm setting one strip set aside. I have a stink, sneaking suspicion that I miscut that one. There's more fabric where that came from at that, so. Okay, so heading over to quiltcamtime at gmail.com to see who's posting me today. So we're going to go right over here to inboxes. All inboxes. Quilt cam time. Oh my goodness. Sue Nuber says she's new. She says, first time live. Thanks for your inspirational videos. 
new to, I'm new to stripping, she says. <laughs> well, welcome. It's a great time, and there's there's no pole dancing involved. Glad to have you with us, Sue. That's hysterical. Laurel says, this is what I'm working on. I love hand piecing. Oh, that's beautiful. So she's working on, and I can biggie size this in my on my phone so you can see. She's doing some cathedral window stuff right there. Can you see her fabrics if I hold it still long enough? Gorgeous. Now, what I want to know is that one piece of fabric that's doing this, it kind of looks like it. But it looks like maybe it's a big, bright floral, and she's cutting different pieces out of it. So each piece looks a little bit different. That's gorgeous. How big are you going to go with that, Laurel? That's beautiful. It's been so so long since we've done this. Um, I'm really happy to be here. I hope you are too. This is from Ted and Deanna, who says, So nice to catch you live, and welcome back. I just got my Jamestown Landing back from the Long Armors, and it needs binding along with a second quilt that was quilted. Winter is for binding. Don't you agree? I've got something that I need to load up on the quilting machine, and then we will get it bound and uh, save that for winter stitching. Snow outside the window. Too cold to go outside. No more yard work for the year. Winters are for binding. She says, hubby is away hunting for a week, so I get lots of me time to get things done. Part of those projects is the leader and ender working in scraps of green and neutrals. Glad to see you back and happier times ahead. Looking forward to the mystery too. So she's from Trout Creek, Ontario, Canada. That is wonderful. So glad to have you with us. Chris Miller says, working on the same block, hooray. Oh my gosh, you've said it block to block. That is great. Okay, I'm gonna biggie this so that we can get a good section of it here. It, you can see the chain happening when you set it chain to chain like that. So that's her quilt right there. The very same block, only just, how many colors do you have that going in there? Just neutrals and greens, it looks like. Greens and greeny blues. But I love how it looks when those hourglass blocks touch each other. Isn't that cool? Wonderful. So what was that again? July, August, 2018, Quilt Maker, or get a digital copy. Okay, that's beautiful, Chris. Thanks for sharing. Kim Evans says Bargello quilts. Our quilt guild memory makers worked on this worked this spring on Bargello quilts using your pattern. During our recent quilt retreat, we took a photo of our quilts. We love our quilts, but even more the time we spend sewing together. And isn't that true? That's what retreats are about. And this, oh my goodness, this is I love church pew photos. So here's a church pew photo of the Bargello quilts from their quilt guild all over the pews. Isn't that great? I've I've often said that this I've decided to do the same thing. Instructions for my family should I be carried feet first out the door. Um, quilts over the pews, names on the quilts of who they're supposed to go to, and all of my fat quarters at the back of the chapel so everybody can pick up a door prize on their way out. And that's how we share the love of fabric. That is wonderful. I love that. Okay, Patricia says, Wanderlust in Louisville. So glad to see you tonight. These are my blocks from your class in Louisville. I had such a good time. I plan to go to Cozy Quilter Sew In next year, hopefully for all, hopefully for all three days. Me too, since I'm supposed to be there. That's wonderful. Off to retreat tomorrow, and we'll be working on Wanderlust. So that's Pat. And here's her Wanderlust blocks, right? Ah, why did you do that? Hang on, it switched, it switched inboxes on me, that's why. Okay, so here is her Wanderlust blocks. Wanderlust is found in Addicted to Scraps, one of my favorites, two and a half inch strips, inch and a half strips, Essential Triangle Tool, does both half square triangles and the flying geese that is in the, um, the block. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. One more. Tiffany Culp says, hi, Bonnie, right at the top of the list. She says, quilting friends forever in Pennsylvania. We are on a retreat weekend and having a blast sewing together. We, are, we were in your garden party class in Hershey, Hershey this summer. We were the group with the little girl, Gabby. Oh, my goodness. Gabby was such a helper. They sat her there 
with the little thread cutter thing, you know, for cutting chain piecing. And Gabby was just so particular about how she was cutting those pieces apart. She's a quilter in the making. I just loved her to death. So tell her hi from me. She says, uh, we are finally finishing the last border of Gabby's garden party quilt as we watch quilt cam. Can't wait for your classes next year. This is Tiffany, Debbie, and Lee. And they sent a picture. Oh my goodness. So there they are. Lots of ceiling, lots of wall, little people. <laughs> aren't, aren't selfie cameras wonderful? But that is what I'm so glad to see. The odd lights are going. The sewing machines are sewing. We've got the so easy tables, you know, that circle your wagons so that everybody can talk to everybody. Enjoy your retreat weekend. I can't wait to see you in July. And please bring your finished quilts because we, we love that at the end of our lunch hour in class. I love to see what you did from previous classes. All righty, so, wow, these are coming in fast and furious here. You guys, I'm gonna scroll way down to the bottom for people that we missed. This is Molly Plymate says, Mill and Momo making good use. We have Nanny Bees to show or pick. I shared your blocks with her. You have another fan. Oh my goodness, this is wonderful. So we've got, snuggles under the quilts and the puppy dog and everything so this is who's tuning in tonight i'm so glad like i said it's it's been far too long if you throw in you know be, besides coast to coast travel for funerals and and things like that we've had two hurricanes here in north carolina everybody was so worried about hurricane florence and that was just some downed limbs and a lot of water and power outages that didn't last very long nobody expected michael and and michael michael packed a wallop i i tell you and i feel so bad for the quilters down um along the gulf coast and those who have lost everything I didn't lose anything. I had a little inconvenience with a small creek becoming a raging river and taking a bunch of tree limbs and debris and boards and lawn chairs and whatever across my yard and over the over the bridge on the street and, and down the other side. But it, it left as quickly as it came and the power was back on by noon the next day. We were lucky. No flooding here at the house because the hill's on slight rise, but the, the river stopped at the edge of my grass where the hill goes up to the house so it was very close my friend prudence um just about eight miles away had a big tree fall on her sunroom she had broken glass broken roof limbs everywhere and it's the second hurricane that that gave her house problems so even locally to me in central northern north carolina is um there's a lot of hurricane damage in this area so thank you for your prayers and for your questions and your emails um saying that you were thinking of us now turn your attention to those who really really need us i know there were some quilt shops that also were heavily damaged in the storm so um it's going to take people a while to um recuperate from this all right i need to sew something so i am going to let me see if i can adjust this just a little bit better so you can see what i'm doing there we go i'm going to grab some of these quarter square triangles since they go with this set and when you're sewing quarter square triangles i like to have them cut right sides together however you do it if you're cutting by accu quilt take the time to put them right sides together before you feed them through the cutter not just when you're feeding them through the machine but when you're feeding them through the cutter and that way you only have to peel you only have to peel from your pile matched pairs excuse me they're already right sides together so i'm going to and i cut extras i i cut what i needed from the strip set and if there was room to get a another hourglass or two i just thought that maybe i would use those as a border or something or i'll piece them into the back i did not want to put a short strip back into the bin so i just cut quarter square triangles until that strip set was gone all right i'm going to cut this off here so this is the other and what i will do when it comes to cut these into their sections I'll put them right sides together so that they hold each other stable. The seams are nested. This is kind of like doing nine patches, but I will cut 
the two sections that I need. I'll have a little bit left over, but because they're cut together and they're, they're opposing, everything is held just a little bit more stable, a little bit more solid. So we will save that and do a whole bunch of cutting at once. We'll feed these through. One of the things I haven't talked about a lot since <laughs> since July, have I? I think we've had one quilt cam since July. I know we did a joint quilt cam with Holly of Holly Ann of String and Story, and we're planning on doing that again probably next month. It was so much fun. We want she has a series now running on color, so we thought it would be fun to do a joint quilt cam where we talk about um, how to choose different colors for the mystery. The mystery's coming up. I'll give you my colors, but what happens if you want to change the colors? How do you know that the changed colors you've chosen are, are going to work? So be watching for that to happen in November. Um, but what I wanted to bring up was the fact that along with everything else, all of the changes that have happened um, in my life over, well, seems like the past year, um, son Jason moved to Portland, Oregon in July and left us his two cats. Supposedly, I'm fostering the two cats. However, I would bet 110% that they're here permanently. I don't see him taking those cats to Portland. He's just got a new rental house that he's sharing with, with two roommates. And they've got their own shenanigans going on with the rental agency. So there's been a bunch of texts and stuff flying back and forth. And uh, But the, the two cats, Dresden and Lola, have settled in just fine. Now, separate, dividing my house is a set of, of French doors. And beyond the French doors is the hubby's office, the mail order fulfillment center, uh, the stock room, there's an extra bathroom back there. So the cats stay on that side of the French doors. Emmy Lou, who's my 18 going on 19 year old cat, has the run of the house, the rest of the house. Neri the twain shall meet. I just am not going to do that to her. She freaked out the moment she saw them behind the, the French doors. She's too old. She doesn't need to deal with that. And Dresden is a beast. He is a huge kitty. If you saw the quilt cam promo that I posted to Instagram and Facebook this afternoon, you saw how big he is. I mean, he's huge. He would dwarf her. He's almost twice her size. And he can be mean. So she doesn't deserve that. So she gets to stay in the big part of the house. They get the little part of the house. But when she crosses the Rainbow Bridge, who I'm, I'm not I'm not wishing that upon her anytime soon, but the cats will be given more room to roam. All right. I love chain piecing. It's mindless. And this is another reason to do all of your cutting before you go on retreat, because you would just pull it out of your baggie. They're already right sides together. And we just feed them through. I have been working on my leader ender four patches here. All my half square triangles are at the cabin, but those four patches are growing. The quilt is growing. I'm hoping to get it to twin size by July when we start the next year. So the leader ender challenges are just that, a year long challenge. And if you finish it in two weeks, you're cheating. End of story. Okay, all right. Okay, so there's the end of those triangles. So I just need to, this is my little basket. I've got two inch squares of various fabrics. And we'll just pick up a purple and black batik and stick, sew it next to a dog bones and hearts. And this is, this one's really thready. I think it's been in here a while. Get those threads off. Okay. Can I just say again how good it feels to be actually sewing at a machine? All right, so this is half hourglass units. And I'm going to just cut them in half here so that they're not any longer than my ironing mat over here. And I will press those to the dark. But we'll take up some more phone calls first. 
when you can sew things in chains, things just turn out a lot straighter. Press these this way to the dark. Okay. We are going to go to the top. Trudy Lapke says, spin the back of four patches. What am I doing wrong that I can't always get my four patch seams to spin on the back? Good to see you again. Okay, Trudy. Um, shoot, I need to sew a four patch first. Hang on, Trudy. That's a good one. I know we've done this in previous patterns. This is going to be a really ugly combination. I don't care. Um, you can also, if you look under the tips and techniques tab at the top of my blog, it will show you photos on what to do, but there's a couple things. And I think some things are best done live on with a with an actual moving camera. So let's see what I can do to, to show you here. All right, so I'm going to take this one off here. First of all, if your squares are chained together like this, you have to cut the chaining thread because the fabric won't move if the chaining thread is still there, okay? So I cut the chaining thread, and I'm going to press these to the dark and sew them together. When you sew your four patches through the machine, I'll bring this up to you. Okay, so this is the way that it's going to go through the machine. I'm going to sew on this side. Do you see how the top seam allowance is pointing up towards the needle? It's important to sew four patches that way when you can, okay? Unless the pattern tells you otherwise. This way, if the top seam allowance is going up towards the needle, the bottom seam allowance will not fight the feed dogs. It's going to work with the feed dogs, so it will not flip on the feed dogs. Plus, the feed dogs are going to help scoot these two pieces, these seams, really closely together. So I don't feel a need to pin a, a four patch seam. If I were sewing the other way, if I were sewing, I have to look at this, okay, on this side, if I were sewing here with the top seam allowance on the lighter fabric pointing down, that means the feed dogs are going to creep those apart and you'll end up with that little gap in the middle, okay? Plus it means that your, your uh, seams on the back will spin the opposite direction of everything else. So chances are, if your seams do not spin sometimes, but do spin others, that you're not consistent with how your four patch goes through the machine. So I'm going to start sewing right here on this side. My seam's going to come down. I'm going to watch this top seam because I can see it. I can, I can handle it. The bottom seam is pointing down towards the dark square on the back, but always start with the dark square first not the light one. All right, so let me do that. Dark square first. Okay, I'm going to do another little square here to chase it with. My four patches will get done faster this way. Okay, now I have to do this, I think, standing up so I can get closer to you so you can see what's going on. Okay. So, all right. So I'm showing you the back of the four patch here, and we're going to look at it as if it's a clock face. And this should be, because it's an external camera, should be um, correct for you. All right. So we have 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Do you see how 12 o'clock is pointing over towards one, towards the dark square? 12 o'clock is going this way. Six o'clock is anchored this way. That means that these other two need to follow suit. So if 12 o'clock is going towards one, I'm going to hold my fingers down on three. Six is coming back, and I'm doing this backwards to myself. Okay, six is coming back this way. So nine o'clock has to lift up. You've got to stay away from this center junction this center junction, so that the fabric can move, okay? So I'm going to hold 3 o'clock down with my fingers. I'm going to pinch both layers of 9, and I'm just going to lift up. And there we go. Sometimes they get a little bit caught. I, it looks like I ran over my seam allowance in the middle of this. It's not as pretty as I hoped. So it, it caught a little bit of that orange right there. But what matters is that the seams out here are going 
in a circular motion. So can you see them going around like a propeller? That's what you do. I'm bungled up that one, but it'll still work. Let me show you one that looks a little bit better. Where did that other one go? This is where we say, never mind. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so this one's a little bit better on the back side. Just remember to put your center seam sideways, side by side, and look for where 12 o'clock is pointing. If it's headed towards one, you're gonna take it clockwise all the way. If it's going the opposite direction, then you've gotta to go towards 11 and go the opposite way. And if you have four patches that are going whoops in two different directions, they'll never work together when those four patches go to join each other. So be consistent with what you're doing. I always send, let's fold this back the way I, I sewed it. I always send the dark square first so the top seam allowance is pointing up. And that's how I do that. I hope that helps somebody, maybe more than one person. Sometimes it's easier to see in still photos um, so go look under the tips and techniques tab at the top of my blog and scroll down for S to S for spinning four patch seams. You'll find some photos there on how to do that. And Mackenzie says, so happy to see you again. Didn't realize how much I missed you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It was just one of those things where when your emotions are just drained and you cry at the drop of an anything. I was afraid that even if a, a, a sympathy message came in, you know, that I would just burst into tears. So I, I just, plus there hasn't been time. So um, I'm really happy to be back. And uh, let's see. Robert and Mary Potter say, was in Colorado and started a Christmas tree skirt. Don't know how I got anything done had gone on a hike, took a fall, thought I had a bad sprain, but went to the doctor and it was broken, dang it, she says. So she's got a Christmas tree skirt here, but her view is gorgeous. See if I turn that sideways, if it'll work. Oh yeah, check out this view. So there's her Christmas tree skirt while she recuperates with a broken whatever it was she broke. So sorry to hear about that, Mary. Speedy recovery. Hopefully it's not your sewing machine foot that's, that's hammered. If so, we all learn to sew with our left foot. It's possible. We can do the other foot. That is gorgeous scenery. I love seeing that. Okay. So we have Tamara says, toddler watching quilt cam. Hello from Fort Worth, Texas. Little Tony almost two is watching quilt cam with me tonight. When my kiddo wants to watch, how can I tell him no? Under my needle is the pages of a cloth book I am attempting to make to help him learn his colors. I love watching quilt cam and happy to join in tonight. Let's see. Photo sideways. I hope it won't. Oh, it turns. Okay, so you know what I'm going to do? Let's see. I wonder if I can. This photo of little guy is sideways. View image. There we go. If I do view image, it's right side up. So we've got little Tony who's watching along. I wonder what he thinks about all of this stuff. Colors are fun, Tony. You never know how you're going to use your colors later on in your life. So get really good at it. We have some quilters who are going to have fun with colors in just a couple weeks. Thanks, Tamara. That was really cute. Anna Braun says, tonight's quilt cam and my project for tonight. Good to see you, Bonnie, working on a binding a quilt tonight. Wondering if you found your missing locks. <laughs> yes, I did. So um, before going to Arizona, you know, I was traveling with just one suitcase for all of this because I wasn't carrying trunk show or whatever. And we just wanted to do, you know, carry on. And so I emptied my busy bag as much as I could, thinking that I really didn't need the stack of completed star hexagon or star and a hexagon blocks with me. So I took out the stack, I set them somewhere. And when I got back home and got ready to do this last trip, I was like, where's my blocks? I can't find my blocks. I don't know where my blocks are. Well, when I had um, packed for Arizona, I had set the blocks on the table and then promptly put something else on top of them so it took me 
cleaning some stuff up and putting stuff away to uncover the blocks. Ta-da! Now I know. Now I know where they are. So thank you. And I added two more to the pile this trip. It took me four hours to do one all the way to Nebraska and another four hours to do the second one on the way back, but it would have been a wasted time anyway. So I have no immediate um, timeline on that project. It's just something to do to occupy my hands. And she's got a beautiful quilt, beautiful churn dash with blue sashings, all scrappy right here at the bottom of her email. Isn't that pretty? Let me zoom in a bit and show you what those colors are. They are just really pretty. Great job on that. I love the simple traditional designs. They, they make me happy. They make my heart sing. They let the fabric take front seat. That's wonderful. All righty. And she says, Naomi Bannister says, I just finished my Boxy Stars quilt top this week. I love it, she says. So we are going to do... Oh my goodness, I love your sashing. How fun is that? So this is Boxy Stars, and there's her sashing is kind of the storm at sea, long, tall, skinny star points as sashing. Look at how dynamic that is. What a great idea. Have you made a Boxy Stars quilt? Three pattern, three patterns tab, two and a half inch strips and two and a half inch squares. If you've got a partial jelly roll, all you need to do is add some background fabric and you'll have that done. So go check that out. This is absolutely beautiful, Naomi. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> and I love I love people's names that you know it shows up just as whatever is in front of their email address. This is Mama Hippie Chicky. <laughs> Mama Hippie Chicky says, I'm excited to catch you live. It's Saturday afternoon in New Zealand, and my helper is watching you with me. Looking forward to the mystery quilt again this year. And it's Susie, Mama Hippie Chicky. Oh my goodness, isn't this precious? Oh my goodness. Don't poop on the quilt. <laughs> that is precious. I, I love how our fur babies and feather babies make our lives so much more enjoyable. All right, so I need to press these quickly. How are we doing on time here? We're doing well. I'm going to just move this over. So what do you think? Should I, do you think that I should mix up these rail fence blocks with other orange and neutrals from other blocks or should I keep them the same block to block? Let me know quiltcamtime at gmail.com or you can, if you're watching on Facebook, you can leave a comment in the comment section. Okay, just going to press really quickly. I'm really careful when I am pressing quarter square triangles, because even though the the one side of the bias has been anchored by the seam line, there's naked bias on the other side. And I want to make sure not to stretch that out. But I have to show you what, whoops, I'm still very, very plugged in here. Okay. Can you, can you see what the name says on that? Rowenta, $3.99. Goodwill. No water in the iron. It will not spit on me because no water. It's an older model. I don't know what, what year. It says Rowenta Max, anti-calc, whatever. But um, I'm happy. $3.99, it's worth it. Okay, I'm just putting the tip of the iron just on the seam as I press it over with my fingers. I am not pushing the fabric in any direction. I'm just letting the heat of the iron bend those fibers. And then my chain's a little long, so we'll get this down here. I usually cut my chains ironing board length. They're just easier to deal with, okay. So just, just the tip of the iron, right where that seam is. I'm not trying to iron side by side or move the iron. I just want the tip of the iron to put heat where the seam is so that those fibers will bend. Okay, we're going to cut this apart. And I usually do this right on the ironing board too. While these are all laid out on a chain, it's easier for me to just use my scissors and come through because I'm not picking up the pieces and manhandling them over a cutter 
and getting them stretched that way. I want to handle these as little as possible. And because I cut with scissors in between, I can stack these all up the same way. Sometimes I use a thread cutter for other, other things, but for this I don't. Okay, just the tip of the iron on the seam. All right, just on the seam. And then I'm gonna just come up between those and snip while they lay flat on my ironing board. And then I can easily stack them all up the same way if I get all the threads snipped. Okay, so I've got two piles, half and half, and now I can just join them together sideways. So let's do that. All right. And you can spin the seams on the back of an hourglass the same way that you do a four patch, but because that little junction is on the bias, Sometimes it fights you when you try to open that up. So depending on where the hourglass is going to go in the block, if hourglass is not joining hourglass, I may just press that center seam open or to one side. It just depends on how you set the, the units in the quilt. And what's next door? This one. These fabrics are really ancient. I'm happy to have them going away. And this is a sweet machine. And I love that my son fed for me. That means a lot. So update on Quiltville Inn. Because I've had lots of questions on that. The windows we ordered clear back. Memorial Day have finally been delivered. We've got windows for the post office. So that's the next big job. Remember, I wanted to be into the Quiltville post office by Thanksgiving. I'm still heavily doubtful because this is the way that construction goes, right? They give you a date and you can just pretty much add six months to it because we've had that with our kitchen, we've had that with bathrooms. But once the windows are in, we can paint inside. And then we can move everything that is in my stock room and all of the mail order fulfillment stuff from the storage room and the dining room and some of the stuff from my office down here and get it in one location. Once I've got that there, then it'll be really easy for me to um, get some hired help to help me get new book orders out when the new book is released in December without having to have somebody I've hired come sit at my dining room table in the morning while I'm still in my pajamas. So we will have that moving forward. And after the windows are in on, on the, in the post office, then everything moves to the inside of the house as far as what's to be done next. The electrical for the sewing room, um, bumping up the heating and air conditioning, um, installing ceiling fans for the bedrooms in the hallway so that we can move some air around. I'm really excited that things are going to start coming together. And once that's done, then we can start painting the interior because there's a lot of touch-up paint that needs to be done. Furniture is well on the way to being acquired. Um, tomorrow I'm picking up a china cabinet in West Jefferson. We have all 16 beds in the five bedrooms. And now I can order box springs and mattresses. After electrical is done and the electrician is out of the quilting quarters, that's the area where the 16 people can sew, then I will um, start working on design walls. I will also start, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, I gotta get the, the 16 rolling chairs. And I've been trying lots of different chairs so that chairs are comfortable. We won't have chairs with arms. We won't have chairs with high backs because as people turn these, you'll be, you'll be, may knock somebody over or whatever. But we're looking for nice task chairs that help your posture 
so that you can sew for long periods of time and be comfortable. And of course, if anybody has a special chair that they want themselves, if they have any special requirements, bring your own chair. Okay. But it's coming. It's getting there. Okay. When I am feeding these through the machine, you notice I don't, I'm not even sewing with a stiletto. I use my left hand outside the realm of my presser foot. So once this triangle tip has gone underneath the presser foot where I can't control it anymore, my left hand does the steering to keep those pieces moving straight back through the machine. So I have straight sewing right off the tip of this hourglass unit. Because even if you're using a stiletto, at some point that tip's going to go under the needle and you can't get your stiletto in there anymore. Try being a two-handed sewer. I can't sew one-handed. It has to be two-handed. If I'm going to keep the, the seam nested right here. And then right here is where I lose control, but my hand is still on the fabric to the side of my presser foot. And I can make sure that I sew straight off of that. And now I can grab another little leader ender piece here. Okay. So here's my hourglass units. How many of them did we do from this strip set? One, two, three, four, five, six, and a bonus leader ender. So we've got one extra, but maybe I'll just do a bunch of these and, and mix up the hourglass units between these blocks too. Maybe that would work. So I just need to do enough so I can lay them out and decide what I'm going to do. All right, let's take some more questions here. Elizabeth Russell says, Sheets, so glad to see you again on Quilt Cam. Just wanted to let you know that I will get those flannel sheets out to you very soon. Flannel sheets, winter. We're going to have some really toasty quilters. Um, during the winter months with flannel sheets on the beds at uh, Quilt Billion. That'll be fun. Thank you so much. And Pauline Lentzman said, great to see you smiling again, is turning a bunny panel. I'm turning a bunny panel that was supposed to be a stuffed toy into a sewing caddy. Fun use of fabric. Happy sewing, Pauline. And she's, oh, how cute is this? So it was supposed to be a stuffed bunny, right? Whoops. I hate it when it does that. I hate it when it does that. Okay, where did it go? It's like the new email comes in and it automatically opens to that. So pardon me. So here's the stuffed bunny part. So this is the outside of the caddy and it was supposed to be a stuffed toy, right? <laughs> She's got on the other half the little zipper bags and stuff that she can put your stuff in so a little Miss Bunny folds in half. How cute is that? And it's perfect for spring since it's spring in Australia. I think that's a great use of that bunny panel. Wonderful. So here's one who says, Brenda here, howdy from Canada, my project tonight, so happy to see you. Oh my goodness, isn't that beautiful? Look at this. I see some wild uses of red in there. Can you pick out what the units are? Aren't those corn block corners amazing? I can see I can call things like this that are in the corners, whether it's a half square triangle or a nine patch or a four patch or this little shooting star thing, they they are magic corners because they make things happen. They connect to other things when we, we put to the quilt together. And I love the fabrics that are in here. In fact, I recognize some of these. These are great, Brenda. I love them. So good to hear from you. So glad you could tune in tonight. And let's see. Debbie Barky Wine says, Scrappy 30s, Pfeffernoose. So happy you're back. Starting a new furniture pile for the inn. We'll chat you up in a few months. All parts done. Now to sew into blocks. Bless you, Bonnie. So you might remember, this was also back in August, when I left Pennsylvania, from teaching at Mary's Quilt Shop. I stopped um, in Northern Virginia to pick up some furniture. That We got the dresser and the 
vanity and a marble table and some other accoutrements that go with the house from these lovely quilters. And it was Debbie's house that I stopped at and got to play with her cats. And we talked about being a three cat house because she fosters cats as well. And so she's got, here's her blocks. So we've got some pfeffer new string blocks happening. See what I mean? Why did you do that? Okay, so here's some pfeffer new string blocks right there. And here's her hourglass units right here made out of 30. So she's doing the exact same thing I'm doing with the hourglass units. Fun on fun stuff tonight. But I really have to thank all of the quilters who have been so generous with their offerings of furniture and beds and rocking chairs and wicker, copious amounts of wicker, and uh, mirrors for the wall and china for the, for the dining room and pictures for the walls and cross-stitch samplers and sayings to hang everywhere to make quilters smile. Because of you, we will be opening um, the retreat probably a lot quicker than we really thought that we could. When I thought of what it was going to take to amass 16 beds um, and 16 sewing tables and, and space for 16 to sit and eat in the dining room and all of the stuff, the job seemed too overwhelming. But you have made it so much fun. So I thank you for that. I'm going to give this a press. Now, one of the things that I tend to do with hourglass units, now, if I were just doing this and not in quilt cam, these first two dog ears, I would have trimmed off already. I would have trimmed those off as I picked them up off of the ironing board. But while the hourglass is still folded this way, I like to, and I'm going to do this right on my tabletop, just clip these corners so that they have a, a, little, a little square corner here, little square corner here, remove the dog ears before pressing. It's just easier because I've got to cut these apart already. So if I take my scissors and cut the chaining thread, I can just easily, and I usually do this right over the trash can, but I'm just doing it right here on my tabletop, just trim those dog ears so that they are trimmed before I press. And this is the, the dog ears that happen when you sew the two halves together. The other ones I'll trim after pressing open. Okay. So you can see that I can just open those and the, and the dog ears are already gone on those. Okay. Let me get these off of here. I'm going to press these babies and I'm just going to press to one side because I don't know where they're going to go yet. If I need to spin the seams, I'll still be able to do it. Again, heat is just going on that center seam not the whole unit. If hourglasses are one of those things that always turn out wonky for you, just be sure you sew your pieces with a scant seam, even maybe a couple threads scanter than you usually do. And that should put extra fabric at the edge of your unit so that you have room to, to trim it up, okay? Half square triangles and quarter square, square triangles are that way. You can actually just so a little bit less, which will have your unit turn out a little bit big and you can trim them down. You don't have to go big to slip or trim down. Just needle over one or two and you'll be good. Okay. So we've got five of these done. They look relatively square. I will check when removing the dog ears, just in case I need to sliver trim a little bit here or there, because sometimes, you know, wonkiness just happens. But if I take my ruler, which is now on the floor, and lay it on top of this unit, I'm going to find... <laughs> You guys, it's it's three and a half, and all I have to do is remove the dog ears. That's good. Now, things to remember is that we are hand guiding, so there will be some variations. So sometimes if I have to, if it feels like it's going to be a little bit short here, just to buy a few threads, I can work this bias just a little bit more. I can get that to where it 
where it's supposed to be and then check again and wow yeah it's right there so remember your bias is like pizza dough and you can use it in your favor so just work the if you're a little bit short here just work this seam just a little bit and see if you can engage that to grow just a, just a little bit then press it again put your ruler on it and see what you've got so what i've got here What if I did something like this and put a different one in the middle? Would that make a difference? Four of the same out here and one different one in the middle? Or do I do five different ones all together? Would you lose the, the whole block idea at that point then? Would it wouldn't look like a block if everything were scrappy in here. If I did, if I didn't have four match sets of rails and I didn't have five or four matching hourglass units does that does that make a difference do you like a different one in the middle let me know what you think this is going to take me way past halloween it may take me all the way up to christmas or more but this this is my next project and if you want to sew along july august 2018 quilt maker magazine Get yourself a digital copy if you can't find it in paperback, okay? All right, let's do just a couple more. Can you believe we've blown through an hour already? So this is from Mari Harmon. She says, what I'm working on. Tonight I'm cleaning up and clearing off. Boy, I can hear you on that one, girlfriend. I'm making space for a different bookshelf so I can get this room functional. Oh, I'm so happy to see. I'm so happy to see your mess. She's clearing this out so that she can weed it out and reorganize and restart. And don't you just feel like when your life feels out of control, if you just can clean or organize one thing, everything else seems to go better. For me right now, that one thing is the other side of my basement. All of my fabric purchases, all the machines that have been out or haven't been quite put away, um, there's some construction stuff over there because the hubby was replacing some ceiling lights. Um, piles of fabric. There's just there's just piles of fabric. Now, I don't feel guilty about having the fabric. I love my fabric. I remember thinking that I better amass all the fabric I can because someday I may be without a job and not be able to buy fabric ever again and I'll have to have enough fabric on hand so that I can sew for the rest of my life without having to buy anything serious dead serious okay so I don't mind having the fabric but I do mind how it is right now but when life is kind of out of control and there's so much going on priorities take over and organizing the fabric is is like clear at the bottom of, of the, the list of things. So if my plate is full, you can only tackle so many things per day, and then the things that you can't get done fall off onto the next day's plate, right? So that, that's how it feels about fabric on that side. But come um, after Thanksgiving, watch out, basement. Watch out. My, I got tickets for my dad to come visit for Thanksgiving. He's going to stay with us for a week. He's coming the Monday before Thanksgiving, and then he's returning home the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. And after that, yes, I know, we will be one clue into the mystery, but the mystery is my only thing going during that period of time before books arrive. And I don't have a date when books are on the truck yet or anything like that. So um, I've got to finish the PDF pattern that you're going to get free with the purchase of the new book from my website. But other than that, basement, watch out. That is my one winter thing I want done before I head off to Japan and the Japan Quilt Festival in January. So, oh, and by the way, if there's anybody who wants to go on that, I heard that there had been a couple of cancellations, which means we've got three openings. So if you want to come to Japan with me, contact crafttours.com. Go to crafttours.com, find um, go hit the quilting category, find the tour, send them a message. We've also got some other things being booked um, at the time. I'm excited about what's coming. Bookshelves looking great. 
I hear you about wanting to organize just one area. And this one's from Ann Wood, who says, my grandbaby's quilt, my first grandbaby's quilt, 1930s reproduction fabric with disappearing nine patch pattern. And then she sent the picture right here. Oh, how cute is that? I think that's perfect for a grandbaby quilt, don't you? Look at all those happy fabrics. It's going to give baby so much to look at. Do, do we dare make a guess with the pink pillow that this baby may be a girl? Just maybe. Really cute. How precious is that? We'll do one more here because it's after 9 o'clock. My voice is going. So we've got Susan Zirk saying, working on my block, just 100 to go. Other blocks on the design wall too. So it looks like, oh, very fun. She's playing with some split nine patch blocks. This was our leader ender challenge a few years back. Always a good one, uses everything. So if you go to the free patterns tab, scroll down to S for split nine patch and you'll see what we did and how we did it. All righty. I spy an on Ringo Lake up there too. Did you see that at the way top? That gives you an idea of how big her blocks are. Wonderful. Okay, all right, I lied. One more. One more. So we have <laughs> Diane Myers, pansy double wedding ring. When somebody puts pansy double wedding ring in the subject line, you just know that's the one you're going to read. Hand quilting on this double wedding ring while finally watching my first live quilt cam. I've watched the archived quilt cams many times, and thank you so much for the many hours of enjoyment. I've learned so many new techniques from you and especially love your rulers. Keep up the great work, Diane Myers. Oh, and there's the pansy. So there's the pansy in the middle of the double wedding ring. I love it. What a great job. Well, listen, everybody, we're heading past nine o'clock. Oh, you wanted to know about the shirt. Isn't this fun? I got this at the International Quilt Study Center in Lincoln, Nebraska last week. We went and saw the cheddar quilts that'll be on display, I think through January and uh, maybe February. I'm not quite sure. Check that out on their, on their website. But what's fun about visiting the museum, they've got all this wonderful merchandise for souvenir -y type stuff. And so I picked this one up right away because it's just a scrappy girl just the way I am. So um, makes my heart sing. I'm really happy to be back with you. As to when we can do another quilt cam again, I am home from, from um, West Virginia for only like three days before I head off to um, Indiana as my last, last, last teaching trip of the year. So probably when I get back from Indiana, I've got several days before I have to pick up my dad for Thanksgiving. So we're looking around probably three weeks from now before I can do anything. If anything happens before that, I'll let you know in blog post or on Facebook or whatever. We'll slide it in there whenever we can. And you're going to be seeing a whole lot of <laughs> Halloween project over the next little while. Hopefully that will encourage you to pull out a project that's, that's got a deadline and, and, and force it in there. Um, if you, have any further questions, keep your the emails coming to quilt cam time. Where did my paper go? Quiltcamtime at gmail.com. And I will reply to you as, as time allows. I love to see your photos. You can always share photos with me. To stick uh, to keep up with my day-to-day -day doings, you can follow me on Instagram or on Facebook and my blog daily. Um, other than that. If it's still early where you are, don't stop now. Put in some more stitches. Put the pieces through the machine. If you are just getting started on your day, if you're down under, wonderful. Have a wonderful Saturday, folks. For those where it's Friday night, this is Bonnie Hunter in the basement signing off till next time. Thanks a lot, everybody. It's great to be back. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.